Lauren Dinowet, the director of the Orient Arts Center, and I want to welcome you to The Palette, our monthly show about arts and artists in our community. Well, it looks like spring is finally on the way, and for me, that means getting organized. But it doesn't mean all that clutter has to end up in the trash. Today, you'll meet artist Shoei Howie, who's breathing new life into the stuff we throw away, using it to stretch her creativity and make new art. We'll also give you a look at what's showing at the Orion Art Center, bringing together young emerging artists in Lake Orion. And artists have been drawing and painting from live models for centuries. In fact, some artists believe it's the only way to truly capture the essence of an individual. We'll show you a group of portrait artists that are gathering every week to paint and draw from live models. And we'll give you a glimpse of our Black Tie Gala, the golden age of Hollywood, one of our biggest fundraisers of the year. All this and more coming up on this edition of The Palette. Okay, so this is Shoei Howie. And Shoei, tell me what kind of artist you consider yourself. I call it found object, and it's not kind of like the toilet as art or the um, the handlebars as the bowl kind of thing. But I find stuff and then I use it, and I they call it upcycling and they call it all sorts of things now. But I kind of think of it as ecological art because I'm trying to keep all of this stuff out of the landfill. We had a show and uh, the theme was nature, and I, I don't know. I didn't eat any funny mushrooms, but I just thought of the mushrooms. And this was um, an old set of sheets, and this was an old skirt, and they became mushrooms. And I went through the mushroom book and found mushrooms that I thought I could imitate, and just the general concept of mushroom um, some of them are indented and some of them are floppy and um, just got some of the ideas from there and then I knit them. So there is a, you do have a philosophy behind it. Yes, I do. And my, I call it artistic integrity. It's, you know, you've got to name your trash and set some limits. And I will buy stuff on the clearance rack, but I, I really try hard not to buy anything retail. It's, I want it headed for the landfill. So I'll go to resale shops. Um, I get stuff from friends. I've even bought stuff at Salvation Army, taken it to the clothing, clothing closet for Love, Inc., traded down so I got worse rags than I came in with, and then took those rags over to Baldwin Center and traded down again. I really am looking for things that are on their way to the trash and I pick things up when I'm walking around and that's how I approach it. That's the way. Now these, I was running out of screens and so I called a friend of mine up and said, I have run out of eat screens desperately. So I actually drove to East Point to get these. Uh, there's more of it, but look at that cool rip. That's gonna be awesome. So I cut those up and those I use the pieces that I use, um, I make littler little things. And I was buying um, mat board, and then I went down to Arts and Scraps and got scraps. So I'm using those as backgrounds instead. And here's a belt buckle, and some hands, and buttons, and snaps. And I have no idea where this came from. It's been in my house for decades. What is the strangest or the most interesting thing that you put in your art that would surprise <laughs> people? <laughs> what hasn't? Um, I haven't gone to roadkill yet, but um, I have had some, um, uh, there's stuff that I pick up on the ground. A, a friend of mine, um, I ended up putting a broken taillight from her actual car. <laughs> when I realized that it was her car, um, it was kind of strange. Um, 
I, I'm guessing over here, uh, my mother died in 1988, and I made these in 2012, and I knew that sooner or later, I was going to express my feelings about her being on chemo. And a uh, little thing that looks like an anchor right down in the lower left corner, that's the needle that I used to put into her uh, port to put the chemo in. And I, I guess that's, this is uh, the little medicine that kept it from uh, her blood from clotting and yeah, these are kind of strange. These are uh, sparklers. This was, um, this is actually copper that I got over here at Jacobson's. You're supposed, it has a sticky back and it's supposed to keep slugs out of your um, garden and plots. So you put it on your pots, but um, you know, works here. This is uh, this is the aforementioned um, piece of tail light from Mona. Hi, Mona. And uh, I use a lot of wire, a lot of foam wire. And uh, a comment I got uh, during an election year: we have a coat that's all embroidery floss. It's every single color that DMC made. Plus, it's got a whole bunch of this stuff, and I had to go through security because we were going to see the um, Clinton, he was the presidential candidate. And I had, to, I had to go through security and I had to hand the guy my jacket, <laughs> which of course looked light and fluffy and weighed, you know, 10 or 12 pounds. And then he put it through the scanner and of course all these little coils of, um, of <laughs> copper showed up and various other things. And that's the only time I've ever seen a Secret, secret Service man smile. So tell me, What's the response? What's the response that you've gotten to your art? People really like it or they don't get it at all, okay? There, there are people who go, this is trash. And then there are people who go, wow, this is amazing. And they can't wait to see what I'll do with something else. Um, I like those people because those people are, they can think beyond the box and the other people I feel really, really sorry for because, well, you know, they do our taxes and things like that. I'm sure they're, they're very good at, at other things and maybe they're fun too, but to be able to look at some piece of junk and then say, ah, I know what this is going to be. I know where this is going. I know what I want to say with this is just really exciting. I haven't found it. These are all pieces of, um, you know, we've all gone to CD now, so we don't need our cassettes. Nice. But uh, just something that I've got a lot of. And these are little pieces that go inside. So those are, I have a bracelet or something, people will go, what is that? You don't think about what's inside them. But these might be leaves, but when you really see all of the parts that go into a cassette, it's amazing. Now, when you see something, do you always know what it's going to be? Or does it take a while? Do you have to percolate on it? Do you have to think? Little pieces will come to me. And then uh, if you look at this sweater I'm wearing, I actually bought some of this yarn um, in college. And I kept saving up the pieces. And I kept saying, I know there's something that this is going to go. And so finally, I had all of the yarn I needed. And I saw a coat somebody was wearing went, and I went home and knit this sweater. So it was a collection of probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 years of what there are. So it's not always an instantaneous process. Sometimes it takes time. Yes. And unfortunately, space to store it. This is the big black and white beast. And I really, really love it. Um, it's got pieces of shopping bag. It's got uh, some jeans. This is the stuff that comes around computer thingies and uh, all sorts of stuff. T-shirts. You said there's even a prom dress in there somewhere. There's a prom dress in here somewhere. This is from um, dog, no, this, there's dog food bags in here. There's all sorts of things. Um, I really, really like the um, old um, linen. 
And the curtains. amazing thing is when you look at it individually, when it's a dog bag or it's a prom dress or, or that no one wants anymore, <laughs> yes. a, a, a computer tie, it doesn't look like anything. But when you pull it all together, you've created a whole. Mm -hmm. And that's what is really so neat, is that I can take something that's pretty much garbage. I can take uh, your grandmother's old linen tablecloths that have gravy stains. We won't point any fingers, but you know. You can, um, you know, I can rip those up for you. They rip beautifully and they knit beautifully. And it's a great way of remembering things. If, if you were to give people advice or other artists advice about how to incorporate more repurposed items, more trash, more of that type of thing in their artwork, what would you tell them? Start with that first. Don't say, okay, I've got a blank canvas and brand new paint and blah, 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 or I've got, uh, I'll go out and buy the right number of, of colors that I need from the rack and I'll do this. Go through your closet, go through your attic, go down to the resale shops and start from there and ask yourself, what is this saying to me? What is this, what life was put into this object and what new life will it have? Thursday, March 28th, the Orient Art Center opened its doors for the K-8 through grade art show. Many art teachers and families from the Orion School District were in attendance. We talked to the director of the Orion Art Center, Lauren Dinowith, about the gallery. Well, this is an exciting show because um, it's going to become a yearly event. March is Art Month, and in conjunction with the high school, which has a show every year around this time, we're going to have a show of K through eight um, Lake Orion students. And each of the art teachers picks maybe eight to ten of their standouts and in their classes amongst all of their students, and brings them here to the art center so that they can be showcased in a in a gallery environment so that the kids can um, that the community can come and see the students work and see what they're doing and it's just exciting for kids and families to be able to see their work you know up in a gallery and um, amongst other students and and to have it highlighted and, and recognized and featured well, first of all, it gives kids an opportunity to see what other students are doing throughout the, throughout the district. It makes their artwork very important for them um, and important for the entire community. Art is something that should be experienced by everyone at all different ages. And at this age, um, starting with kindergarten and going through eighth grade, it gives you an opportunity to see how kids grow, to see how they view the world, and how they express themselves in a different venue other than writing. From the Orient Art Center, I'm Kelly McKay, reporting for The Palette. Hi, my name is Ed Ratzenberger. The Orient Center has a Seniors Advisory Council. It is a group of 12 people who volunteer to help the Orient Center staff with their efforts to provide the programs and services of the Orient Center for the seniors of our community. The Center would like your assistance in order to help determine the activities and services that seniors prefer. The center is a comfortable and enjoyable place for you to visit, to meet with your friends and to make new friends. You're welcome to provide your suggestions for activities and services, for your general observations, for your complaints, and for your positive comments. If you would like to give your thoughts to the Advisory Council, please stop by the Orient Center and deposit your comments in one of the boxes that the Advisory Council has made available. If you want to include your contact information, we will respond to you within a few days. Or if you prefer, we also welcome and value anonymous comments. All contributions will be discussed. We hope you will respond and we thank you in advance for your help. It is a pleasant place to enjoy and does not cost a penny to be a member. Membership in the seniors group is free. Thank you for your time. We look forward to hearing from you and to meeting you. Take care. And I'm a portrait artist, part of the Michigan Portrait uh, Group here. Well, this group's been meeting uh, for probably 15 or 16 years. 
We meet here at the Diamond Dave's uh, on every Monday evening and uh, enjoy the com camaraderie among the artists. And, uh, we always have an interesting model, as you can tell from this evening. I was at an art show and uh, met one of the artists. And the artist said, had asked, would you like to model for us sometime? And I said, sure. Are you an artist yourself? No. no. What, how do you feel about being a model? Um, I think it's interesting. I've never done it before, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the experience. Let's just see what it's like, you know. See if I can sit still for a number of hours. I love it. It's really a great space. We have plenty of room. And uh, if anyone's interested in joining us, you're welcome. We meet on uh, Monday evenings from 6.30 to 9.30. And uh, we have um, models every week, except for holidays, of course. On Saturday, March 2nd, well over 200 attendees arrived at Addison Oaks to show support for the Orion Arts Center. The theme of this year's gala was the golden age of Hollywood, and those in attendance enjoyed a night of dinner and music. Area businesses and artists donated items for a live auction and to fill raffle baskets. The money raised from the event helps the Arts Center fund scholarships and allows the center to offer exhibits and events throughout the year. I am so grateful for our community support, for the people who are out here supporting us tonight, for all of these businesses that have donated um, to help the Art Center. I mean, truly, it's, it's, it's heartwarming to me. The highlight of the evening came when the executive director handed out two awards. Recognized as 2013's Artist of the Year was Lake Orion resident Yolanda Garfield. I just love Yolanda. To me, she is a true artist. She cares about art. Her art is very um, fresh and dreamy, and, um, and she cares about the art and artists, and also has been very involved in the Art Center over the years. 
I'm very excited. I'm happy for the Arts Centre that this event looks so successful. And uh, of course I am honoured. The Arts Centre is so important to me and to other artists who live in this area because they give us a venue by which we can show our work and also learn new things. So it's, it's really wonderful. Also recognized that evening was Rob Cavanaugh, who has been the Dragon Boat Race Director the past three years. Cavanaugh was named 2013's Patron of the Year. Rob Cavanaugh is truly deserving of the award of Patron of the Year. He's our 2013 Patron of the Year, someone who goes above and beyond um, the call of duty in the name of the Arts Center, and he truly does. He has been on the board for the Arts Center. He is also um, the team captain for the Dragon Boat Races for Dragon on the Lake. Every time I speak with Rob, he is positive, he's motivated, he has ideas, he brings people together for the Dragon Boat Races, truly deserving of this award. I'm absolutely honored. It's uh, flattered and very honored. I'm, I'm really proud to be in Lake Orion and uh, you know celebrate the lake in the town. And you know honestly, it's absolutely just fun to to kind of create one of Lake Orion's biggest family festival parties and bring everybody together and watch everybody is kind of having a great time downtown. I mean, Lake Orion is way overdue for a a real good uh, festival. And, and and you know this is only our fifth year, but it's getting bigger and bigger every year. And I think really the the festival is really ready to explode. We need we need more volunteers. Cavanaugh is already gearing up for this year's Dragon Boat Races, which are part of the Art Center's annual Dragon on the Lake Festival. This year's event is scheduled to take place during the weekend of August 23rd through the 25th. From Addison Oaks, this is Joe Johnson reporting for The Palette. Well, that wraps up this edition of The Palette, but here's what's coming up this month at the Orient Arts Center. Turn your trash into art. We want to see your best creations for the Recreate Recycled Art Show. Now, the show is open to both kids and adults with $850 in prizes. It's sponsored by Waste Management. You can drop off your art at the Orient Arts Center by April 20th and then come to the show to see everyone's creations. April is also National Volunteer Awareness Month. At the Orient Arts Center, we have a ton of fun and we're so grateful to our wonderful volunteers who help us in everything we do. If you like to plan events, get involved, or if you're a high school student who'd like community service hours, we'd love to hear from you. You can find out about all our classes and events by calling the Orient Arts Center or visiting us online at www.orientartcenter.org. Thanks for watching The Palette and we'll see you next month.